stopping with testing mm -hmm. before we have something to test. Mm -hmm. So how to do that? That's the topic. All right. So what is the problem? Um, you might have heard about that famous book from Frederick Spruce, The Miserable Man. It has very, very interesting stories about that. And here is one of his uh, scenes is uh, that the most, most difficult thing is to write to the clients in a way that you do the software or the product, whatever it is, a combination of hardware and software. So this and to make the right decisions. <coughs> this is really the problem that we have. So the question then is to that problem, can we help as testers solve this problem? And my clear opinion is yes. So uh, some facts about the problem. Uh, you all have your stories about your defects, about things that happen. Uh, some of these stories have been published, data has been published about the amount of uh, wrong requirements or specific defects that happened, like the last one here that defects and requirements uh, caused some real, very, very high damage in the space. All right, so the problem is we know, we know it's really a fact, we know that we have a problem to solve. So, how can we solve the problem? The problem is um, in a way um, that we um, need to define the requirements that they really produce or, or are the foundation for the right product. So, as a tester, we can help to define criteria that we can check whether the requirement is correct or not. To do and uh, to know in order to support this identification of these defects. So, first of all, Yoram said something very important. He said, take your time to analyze the situation. Here in my situation, take the time to analyze the requirements. And now the question is, what do we do within this time? Take your time, I can tell you what we need to do within this time. So, the first thing we need to know and the ability that we need to have is reading. Reading requirements. Reading and understanding these requirements. The second ability that I think is very important that we are able to transform these requirements from one representation to another representation. That could be if we have written requirements in natural language, in English language, for example, we can transform these sentences to a model. Whatever the appropriate model is, this is something we should be able to do as testers. When we are reading, we should have the ability to identify the critical things like inconsistency, inconsistency within the requirements, inconsistency against outside context or regulations, whatever it is. And we need to be able to write effective tests. So the last one is the most obvious, but all the others are very, very important. So when transforming, we need to have, uh, we need to understand and be able to model itself, and we need to be able to create these tests, and very important as well is we need to be able to communicate these tests. We need to be able to tell people what the fact is. This is where we shall improve. We can help support to find 
length to cross this way is negative. So, as testers, to summarize, we don't need just to be able to write tests, to execute tests. We need to be able to read the things, the source where we get the tests from. And we need to be able to model. All the modeling techniques are very, very important thing for us as testers. <laughs> so, my solution now is, or one of the solutions I have is, and uh, that's the one that I would like to present to you. This is the perspective based, based reason, reading technique. And this in combination with an aspect of the behavior theory development is just given when when. I do not have a name for that. Just given when then. So, and I tell you how to combine these. This is basically the model or the, the flow, what it happens within, within a, a, a project. So we start with a specification. That can be the requirement specification. It would be best to start with the requirement the specification, but we can do that with any specification. So the specification shall be read, reviewed. This is, oops, that's the wrong thing. That one. Here, this review, this is the central element here. From this review, we create these models and these tests. And with these models and tests, we get new specifications. We get hopefully better specifications. And we get an add-on. This is, these are the modeled specifications that can be used by others as well. From here, we have then the development activity. Then we have the application. The one thing we all know, this application will still have some defects. And these defects will need to be found with uh, several techniques. And here we can provide from here, from this review, we can provide the test cases already. That doesn't mean that we create test cases up here, but it already we have a good set of test cases available and uh, test cases that are really against the requirements. Okay, so this is then the topic here, these two, two clouds here. So we have the technique, perspective based reading and we have this given when then. Technology to write or format templates that we use for our test cases. So, some words like business driven development. How of you have heard of business driven development? Okay, some of you, some short words. You all know Agile. Agile is the buzzword since the last 10 years. But there is a first generation, there is a second generation, and behavior driven development is one of the second generation technologies. Basically, it's, it really starts very early and takes up some of the techniques already in the first gen, uh, used in the first generation. Uh, basically, the idea was, uh, how do, how do we write requirements and how, how do we uh, talk about requirements? And um, it's um, the definition. It's by describing it from the point of view of its stakeholders. So at the very beginning, so it takes up the needs from the business and likes to, tries to transform them via this uh, given, when, then, uh, acceptance criteria, it's officially called an acceptance criteria, to an automated test case. That is not always needed that you do the automated testing. You can always do manual, and I'm just talking about manual implementation right now, because this is in, in, in still in many cases, and in particular, in, in, if you're not in product development, you do not have that many automated tests. So, um, so what does it enable? It's, it's enabling communication. This is the, the very important thing that you transform and describe the requirements in a way that people understand and then have to come to the level design perspective to model something. This is where, like I said in the beginning, it's important for us to have the knowledge 
modern, modern software or as a problem. So uh, it is uh, this has been then used and checked and it was really uh, it's clear that it was empirically tested that it is effective, more effective than just reading. So uh, it is a system. Can you give us an example of uh, what we are speaking? Yes. Many years ago, I was a user designer. And being a tester, the goal that I had from you was to find performance flaws in the design. And I spent three days looking only from the point of view of performance. And finally, I could find three trivial defects in the design, resulting in scrapping of the design. So this is an example of goal based review, not a general review, but a yep. kind of a defect in mind and uh, it works. Thank you, Vipul. So, um, um, first step is, is reading, and during that reading, you can do two things.